High dynamic range refers to a type of picture that is highly detailed with intense color and is typically made by shooting several photographs of the same subject at different exposures and then digitally merging them together. For instance, you could merge one normal exposure with one overexposed image and one underexposed image to create this detailed, ultra crisp HDR image. Now in the past, a normal workflow for faking HDR involved changing your image to lab color, converting it to a smart object to make it non-destructive, and then tweaking the curves, enhancing the shadows and highlights, sharpening the high pass filter, and then making other corrections as needed. But now, with the HDR toning command, you can sort of fudge your way there with a single dialog box. So now I have this image of Ojai, California, and I'll show you how you can use the faux HDR command to modify the look of your image. To pump up the hyperrealism with your image, go to the Image menu, choose Adjustments, and then choose HDR Toning. HDR Toning will ask if you want to flatten your document to proceed, and you'll need to do this. So Go ahead and do that. I'm going to duplicate my image so that I can show you some examples afterwards. And then we'll do that again. So image adjustments, HDR toning. Yes, go ahead and flatten because you need to be on a locked, flattened background layer. And now the options that you select are totally up to you. Here you can adjust the edge glow, the tone and detail, and the advanced area has shadows, highlights, vibrance, and saturation. There is a hidden area here for toning curve histogram if you wanted to apply you know, a midpoint marker and adjust the histogram. Usually you can get everything you need in the edge glow, tone and detail, and advanced areas. Play around with the sliders until it looks right to you, and typically you get the best results when you adjust the gamma, the exposure, and the detail sliders before you lighten or darken the shadows and highlights, and then the last thing you would do would be to add the vibrance and the saturation. I have played around with this image already, so I know what the best numbers would be for this particular image. So I'm just going to plug those in while we're working here. And you can see, and then we'll show you the before and after version. And of course, this is completely subjective. The values really could be anything depending on your particular image. And then we're going to do some subtraction here. Ideally, I'm really just trying to pull as much color and detail out of this image as I possibly can without overdoing it so that it looks unnatural. If that seems like too much to you, you could always tone it down, but uh, I would do something like this to really sort of overemphasize, uh, like pump it up, really make it hyper real, and click OK. Now this is also a destructive edit, so if you wanted to make this non-destructive, you could convert your flattened file into a smart object first. Or what we just did was we made a duplicate copy and then we applied this to the flattened file so that we have our original if we ever need to go back into it. So here is before, which by comparison now really seems flat and dull. And here's the after, which is really, wow, amazing. So let's go look at some of the other examples. There was the before, there's the after, here's another before. The sky kind of looks a little bit hazy off in the distance, but with this technique, we could really pull the colors out of the sky and bring some saturation back to the colors of the mountains. Here's an image of scarves above a skylight, and pumping up the color really makes it much more vibrant. And here's another scene with some faux, hyper-realistic HDR color.